Hey, Richard, I just want to let you know that me and my cat watch you all the time and we hate your guts. Thank you. From an early internet pioneer to a man whose entire life is the subject of harassment and amusement for thousands of people, the Wings of Redemption show, trapped in an endless loop, unable to escape. You've probably heard of him, and if you haven't, you're in for a wild, wild ride. Look, look here! Look, listen! Hey, uh, whatever, I hope your family dies in an automobile wreck. A modern internet classic, Geordie Jordan, the man behind the game attack, one of the most documented online content creators of our time. A small channel, but with more haters than almost anybody else. And I'm not talking about haters that leave a negative comment here or there, or just talk about wings if he comes up in conversation. I'm talking full-blown stalker, call the cops to your house, run a fan channel where they clip everything he ever does and says, just to make fun of him and generally try to ruin whatever he does in life. And that is why this video is the insanely pathetic life of Wings of Redemption. I can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. This is not a video to retell the classics about Geordie. That being said, I do have to give a general overview just so you can understand what I'm talking about. His life thus far is a train wreck, one you cannot look away from. I fell down the Wings of Redemption rabbit hole about five years ago myself, and I ended up watching over a hundred hours of videos about him in a handful of months. I've been keeping up with him and his antics to this day, going on binges of the clip channels that document his life. It wouldn't be a stretch to say, I'm a Wings of Redemption connoisseur. Wings has some of the most dedicated fans and followers on the planet, making it easy to keep up with what's going on. These guys watch every minute of his time online, and then they put it together with the sole purpose of laughing at him and fueling the lol cow furnace. So who is Wings of Redemption, and why do these people do this to him? Geordie comes from a trailer park background in South Carolina. According to his Wikipedia, he had a pretty fucked up childhood. From his own mouth, his parents were related, making him a child of incest. Like, I'm the wrong person to ask all that because my parents actually were somewhat related. His father left when he was two years old, and he was forced to move into his grandparents early on, who raised him for his entire life. Now, just to let you know, just to get one thing clear, most of the things we know about Wings comes from him while he's been live on stream or his podcast, which would usually mean they're somewhat reliable, because why would somebody lie about this type of stuff? But Geordie is not exactly what I'd describe as a trustworthy narrator, so anything I say that comes from him, unless otherwise corroborated, should be taken with a pinch of salt. He is a habitual liar, and has been caught lying about the most redundant, silly things many, many times. So he grew up with his grandparents, was a relatively normal weight and size, and then in school, something changed. He started to overeat, and became overweight. He then apparently suffered a serious head injury where his skull was cracked open by a baseball bat and of course was mercilessly bullied throughout his entire childhood. He worked some jobs, the usual type of stuff, movie theatres, dominoes, and then eventually as a crane operator for a company called Metglass. He lost that job during the 2007 financial crisis and decided to start making videos on YouTube in 2009. Yes, he was that early to the platform. Wings hit the ground running at the beginning of it all, one of the founding fathers of the Call of Duty commentary channels. This was where Wings likely found the first avenue of public life that didn't come with mockery and bullying about his appearance. He recorded voiceovers without any video there to put a face to the name. Whoa, I'm back. It's your boy, Wings of Redemption. And I'm here with another commentary for Persona Gaming. For the first time, he was just like everybody else, and it seemed to be going well. He reached 100,000 subscribers, got contracted with then-popular multi-channel network Machinima, and started a podcast with other popular YouTubers Woody and FPS Kyle, aka FPS Russia. Now, real quick, the biggest controversies involving Wings and why he has the reputation he does to present day, I've got to run them off because it wouldn't be a Wings video without including them. Starting with beefing with bigger YouTubers over dumb shit about Call of Duty that no one should ever care about. Maybe the most famous is when he had Pro Syndicate, another Call of Duty YouTuber on his podcast, PKA, 
and just shit-talked him the whole time because Wings had a monstrous ego. The pair ended up doing a live one versus one to settle the beef. Wings lost, resulting in one of the most infamously pathetic clips to exist on the entire internet. I'm, I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep fucking laughing, you fucking f Oh, Wings, I think oh. you are. Fuck! Why the fuck you stream that shit? It was your idea. No, I didn't say stream it. Please, please cancel the stream. It's just me playing. I don't give a fuck. Please cancel the stream. I do not want to hear these fuckers talk. After this, instead of handling it like an adult, he tried to bribe Syndicate to let him win in another 1v1 and split the money they would make, which is just so, so, so sad. It would have been very easy to just say, my competitive side got the better of me. I shouldn't have been shit talking a guest on the podcast. I should definitely not have raged, but that's how these games get me. I'm just super competitive, but at the end of the day, the better man won and I'll get you next time. He would have still got some shit, of course, but people would have liked this. He could have turned that viral clip into something that helped his career, and instead, he turned it into something that will stick in his paw like a thorn for the rest of his internet life. He then had somewhat of a breakdown on Twitter in 2012, where Wing's career was on a constant downtrend due to mostly his own inability to recognize mistakes and his ego, and he decided to make it public that he was having thoughts of unaliving himself which you would hope would garner sympathy, but already by this time, people didn't like Wings, and instead, it was met with mockery. He didn't help matters when he then went on a podcast where he made threats to other creators and smashed some stuff on camera, as he often did. Wings then organized a camping trip with his best friends, Kyle and Woody from the PKA podcast, which he canceled at the very last minute. Like, I'm talking Kyle had driven three hours to the area, called Wings to ask if he was almost there, and Wings just said, I'm not coming. At which point, after a litany of other dramas, the two decided to kick Wings off his own podcast and continue it without him, a podcast that is still going to this day. Following this, Wings, like many other failing content creators, decided to try and make content that would please the YouTube algorithm and get him back in the spotlight, changing up from his usual Call of Duty commentary content to try and jump on trending topics. But that isn't what people wanted to see. Nobody cared about his opinion on these topics, and so it wasn't successful. Instead, in a last-ditch effort, he turned to streaming in 2014 on Twitch, again, being relatively early to the medium, as he was with YouTube five years prior. The thing about Twitch, which many people don't understand, is that you can't really hide who you are for too long. Unlike YouTube, where everything is curated and you can just not upload a video if it makes you look bad, live streaming doesn't allow you to hide. Eventually, something's going to happen, somebody's going to say something, you're going to slip up, and things are going to go badly. In Geordie's case, his cherry-picked Call of Duty videos where he was an absolute god, which did sometimes happen on stream, were mostly replaced with him live having his ass absolutely beat, which made him get more frustrated, which made him get more angry, and then people of course would challenge him to 1v1 games because beating a famous streamer is cool, especially when he would get mad at them and they could clip it for funny content. One of the most famous instances is this one right here. Hey, uh, whatever. I hope your family dies in automobile wreck. I say that because you're a fucking piece of shit. Now that's probably enough history to get you to where we are today. Sort of. I'm obviously missing out on a million things because again, there are people out there that have chronicled this man's entire life in both text and video format as if he is one of the most historically relevant humans in history. I'm pretty sure there are more hours of video about Wings of Redemption than there are about world leaders, innovators in technology, and world famous philosophers throughout time. So you've got the history, but you've not really got the full context. I'm going to tell you now that Wings has said and done some terrible things, and generally made himself look like an utter fool on numerous occasions. But he is just a man a man with a fragile ego who has tolerated bullying his entire life. He clung to the only thing he ever felt gave him value, his gaming skills. His online persona was that of a tough guy who didn't give a fuck, a complete opposite of who he was in real life. In reality, at this time, he was an incredibly insecure, lonely, depressed individual who was dealing with his grandmother, the woman who raised him, going through late stage cancer. And that isn't to forgive his transgressions, but to add some human colour to a story that has been told dozens of times with only strokes of black and white. But yeah, 
I can't. I try not to think about it. I try to just keep my mind busy. 2020. Bad year. Wouldn't recommend. Zero out of ten. So why do people treat Wings of Redemption as the internet's biggest punching bag? Well, to put it simply, because he's not only made it easy for them to do so, but because he's handled it all incredibly poorly. Wing's personality type is not suited for livestream content. Being so desperate to fit in and garner respect from his peers has led to many clips that would get you cancelled in the current internet landscape. He said incredibly edgy things to be funny, to make himself feel impressive, but the reality is he's not that funny. Instead, he created a growing ecosystem of hate watchers, some popular channels being Sean Ranklin, Wings 007, Wings Tings, Breaking Banquet, Gulag Kingpin, Wings Redemption Professional Predator, and there are many, many more. So how do these channels even exist? Well, because Wings has thousands of hours of content online. I made a point that the new generation of females are whores? Well, let me, let me tell you, Shay, when, when she says no three times, that means yes. I did say the age of consent should be 12. But like even 16 at 45, that I, I'd let that slide because a 16 year old can make her own damn decisions. And why can they all exist? Because there are hundreds of thousands of people out there that want this content. Some people like me who watch out of curiosity and some people who watch because they hate him because maybe he makes them feel better about their life. And I'm not joking when I say you can make hour-long compilations of Wings saying incredibly insensitive, psychotic, problematic things, most sentences of which would be enough to single-handedly get this video sent to the monetization shadow realm. Geordie Jordan, Wings of Redemption, has been bullied his whole life. He went from being bullied at school to being bullied at work, and then he escaped to the internet. Finally. A place where gamers could just be gamers, and maybe he could fit in. But he couldn't. Instead, the internet bullied him too. Why? Because why not? People want to feel better about their own lives, and what better way to do that than prop up a villain and make yourself feel good by fighting them? Geordie thought he was growing an audience of fans who appreciated him. Instead, he was growing an audience that were not there for his gaming skills, but instead to see him get trolled, bullied mercilessly, until he lost his temper in epic fashion. Look, look here! Look, listen! Appearing offline does not fucking stop it, so stop giving fucking advice you know nothing about. Many people showed up to his streams purely so they could be there to take part in giving ammunition to the clips channels so they could make more videos. To give the Wings of Redemption troll discord channels something to salivate over. And I'm not saying Wings did nothing wrong, of course not. He's not been a good friend, nor an especially good person. But does that mean he deserves to have every minute of his life ruined by a mob of internet jackals? Now, as mentioned earlier in the video, I fell down the Wings of Redemption rabbit hole, starting with Frederick Knudsen's feature-length documentary of his life. I then watched hundreds of hours of clip channels before going to Wings' own streams and watching unedited videos to see what he was really like, to see if they were presenting the real Wings. I went through a journey from start to finish. At the beginning, I laughed at Wings and how ridiculous he was, how pathetic he was, how crazy his reaction seemed, how funny his life seemed to be. Then after a while, I just started to feel deeply sorry for him. He is the definition of a lol cow, which as a concept has never sat right with me, but that is what he is. A person who exists on the internet for others to make fun of, his entire life being a self-fulfilling prophecy, a loop of behaviour that never ends. You see, Geordie Jordan exists on the internet for a job, streaming video games and hoping his audience gives him money. If he doesn't do that, he has no income, he hasn't saved money, he needs this job. Which means he is forced to stream each day, knowing that whenever he presses that go live button, he will be mocked to his face in chat, and then whatever he does or says will be clipped and used against him, even if it's just a normal conversation that anyone else could have without any issue. He's been banned from Twitch, which massively harmed his monetization opportunities. He's been banned from third party programs that enable donation options for audiences to give him money directly. They've got me banned off Streamlabs and Stream Elements at this point. I haven't appealed my Streamlabs ban. 
so I can do that. His YouTube channel has been repeatedly copyright striked by channels that use his own content against him, and this doesn't even touch upon the fact that people make fake social media accounts pretending to be him and commenting inappropriate things on girls' profile, to the point he's been reported to the FBI and had actual federal agents show up to his home repeatedly. They've hacked his PlayStation account, they've made his stream impossible to function organically by joining his lobbies and trolling him, abusing him on voice chat, spamming his chat with racism to try and get him banned, sending him food, showing up at his house, and the million other things that they've done to him over the years. They've made this man's life hell. And you might say there's a simple solution to these problems. To quit. To just turn off the internet, stop streaming, and get what people usually call a real job. Which would be true for most people, but for Wings, he can't do that. He tried. He DoorDash delivering takeout food for people in his area. People found out and made fake reports to DoorDash that he was stealing their food or that their food orders were arriving missing items as he was eating them. Whenever he talked to a woman online, a potential relationship, which of course didn't come easy for him, the Discord groups would find out who it was and send them manifesto levels of documentation to make sure they didn't continue speaking to him. Essentially, if there was a way for this man to try and change his life for the better, to live a happier life, these people would find a way to ruin it for him. Do they do this because they sincerely believe he's such a bad person that he is irredeemable and doesn't deserve to be left alone? Or is it because if they let him escape and live his life happily, they'll have to find someone else to direct their frustrations at? The fact is, there's a negative expectation out there that I'll never change. The trolling's never gonna fucking stop. There's always going to be a new person, and there's always going to be a person with mental issues that comes out there, right? That is, that's things that actually will fucking happen, right? All I can do is sit back and hope I don't get a mentally unstable person that wants to come to my house and fucking shoot me. So every, just remember, every time you're doing that, you're playing a part into that role. What I can say is that when is it enough? When does this end? What would it take for these people to be happy and just leave him alone? His death, his incarceration, what do they want as penance for his sins? And I'm of course again not saying that Wings of Redemption is a great person or that he's done no wrong. I know way better than to say that, but what I am saying is that the people who do this to him are as bad, if not worse, than he has ever been. They're very lucky they haven't pushed this man to breaking point, that he hasn't done something incredibly unpleasant to himself or others as a result, with them being partially to blame. And I do have to wonder, do these people not realize that in this story, they're not the good guys, they are also the villain? Here's here's the problem, right? When you, when you look me up or you see a video from me, it's almost always a troll video and they're almost always the worst shit you can possibly see. So it, it automatically, it crafts an opinion that I'm a terrible person. And even if somebody gets tired of it, three more people replace them. So where does this story end for Wings of Redemption? That's a hard one to answer. Wings, like most of us, goes through ups and downs. The difference is, his a broadcast for all to see, which is why we can spot a trend. He will do something that seems like an incredible leap forward, only to take a few steps back. For example, he pushed himself and his viewers to the limit by fundraising what he called a life-saving surgery. An operation to reduce the capacity of his stomach to speedrun losing a lot of his excessive weight. He raised the money, he went to another country by himself, and he got it done. In the following weeks and months, he actually lost weight. But then he slipped back into old habits and ate so much that the surgery was undone, gaining it all back. He goes through streaks of motivation where he says he will do things, only to not follow through. But that doesn't mean his life hasn't progressed at all. He did get married and now lives with his wife, and he pushed himself to do a YouTuber boxing match recently in London, England, fighting another bygone era YouTuber Buggy on the KSI undercard. And he won. He beat Buggy's ass for a second round TKO. Now even before this, Wings still had fans, people who stuck around long enough for him to grow on them, but now his name is more relevant on social media than it has been in probably a decade. His OG fans who were there for him would love to see him do better, to make real progress this time, and actually stick it out. To keep going with the training, to lose the weight, to change his mentality, and to grow again not only as a content creator, but as a person. This is the best opportunity he's ever had. Not just for his career and his health, but to escape the lol cow spiral. To pull himself out of the trenches of a decade-long war against himself and the trolls. 
After all, it's entirely on him, as I don't see what would make any of these people leave him alone to either prosper or fade into obscurity. And another big question is, does Wings even want them to go away? After all, a large portion of his current audience are there purely to see him fail. If he starts to win, will he maintain enough income to continue living his life in the way he's grown accustomed? There are many questions, but something that is certain, no matter what happens to Wings, it will be documented for all to see. No doubt there are many more videos to make about Wings of Redemption. He is, after all, one of the most interesting characters on the entire internet, with so much deep lore to explore and an uncertain future. But for me, I just wanted to talk about an angle that rarely, if ever, gets talked about. That's why this is the insanely pathetic life of Wings of Redemption, a bed he made for himself, but one he continues to get in every night and climb out in the morning. Is this going to be it, the change we've been waiting for? I personally hope so, but maybe not. And I, I can't stop streaming. You think stop streaming stops this? Do you think this stops? I could quit streaming this very fucking second. The videos still stay up. There's still million view documentaries saying I'm the fucking worst person on earth. The same people that send hookers and fuck with people on TikTok to try to get me arrested, they start calling my fucking job that I get whatever job I can get with a 14-year work gap. That's the truth of it all. I'm stuck here. This is my life. There is no getting out for me. 